the very basic, but one of the most important asset of the investigation team, to identify, and conclude, when and how, the issue started is, logging, or system logs. System logs are the most simple, yet critical information gathering tool, available by default, in all operating systems. System logs may be stored locally, in readable file format, or, in binary text format. Sys logs, are the de facto standard, for logging messages, which can help in storing logs locally, or, in the remote archive server. Logs, in general, have various different levels of debugging, and provide information, like event timestamp, severity level, etc. Hello, welcome to the next episode of Get Certified Together program by TechnoCoff, your free online knowledge sharing community. Visit our website, www.technicoff.com for more information. In this episode, we will be covering the next section of the CompTIA Security Plus Certification Exam. Have you watched an action movie, where after fighting the bad guys, and saving the city, our team of good guys roams around with their loved ones, relaxing with beer and grills. Well, in the real world, someone needs to sit down, and analyze, what happened wrong in the first place, so we don't face similar attacks again. Maybe in movies, they keep this part for the sequels, which they never make, who are we to judge, right? Hence, investigation of what happened, on the day of the cyber attack, which team members, of the incident response team, were involved, in different stages we discussed in the last episodes. Like, who reported the issue for the first time, who helped in mitigation, and recovery, etc. All these questions, must be answered, with a detailed discussion in front of, a neutral auditor. After all, incident closure doesn't necessarily mean it will not happen again. A thorough investigation of the system, is required to find the root cause of the problem, and ensure, that a proper fix is applied, to the system. These activities are collectively, part of the investigation. There are various tools, and methodologies, used by the team of investigators, as part of this exercise. Let us discuss them now. The very basic, but one of the most important asset of the investigation team, to identify, and conclude, when and how, the issue started is, logging, or system logs. System logs are the most simple, yet critical information gathering tool, available by default, in all operating systems. System logs may be stored locally, in readable file format, or, in binary text format. Sys logs, are the de facto standard, for logging messages, which can help in storing logs locally, or, in the remote archive server. Logs, in general, have various different levels of debugging, and provide information, like event timestamp, severity level, etc. Of course, logs downloaded from the systems, may, or may not, be readable right away, or, even if they are in plain English, the extent of the information, may be overwhelming for the investigator team. Hence, logs analysis is, a completely separate activity, which may use different mechanisms, and, frameworks, to extract important information, from heaps of data. Manually analyzing the huge amount of logs, for the systems is neither productive, nor, efficient, as we have multiple endpoints, that may exist in a production-grade network, of any organization. We need to use centralized, security, information, and, event management systems, also called, SIM, and, security, operations, automation, and, response platforms, also called, SOAR, to make this process of the log analysis, work faster, and more reliable. These solutions help in correlating events, from different sources, and automatically, respond to the different scenarios, using predefined playbooks. Besides logs analysis, there may be a compliance requirement, or customer agreement, which binds companies to legally conduct audits, of the incident, and, its aftermath. Audits, are often conducted by a neutral company. Additionally, for future businesses, audits are also performed, to verify whether all standards, and, compliance are met by an organization, acting as the service provider, for their clients. We can have three types of audit reports. First is, SOAK 1 report, which is prepared, to provide assurance to the customers, that all standards are met. The second category is, SOAK 2 reports, which are prepared, with detailed testing results related to the service provider, in accordance with the CIA triad. 
and third is, the SOAK 3 reports, which is a high-level report of the service provider, in accordance with the CIA triad. It is important to note though, that not all investigations, are of the same nature. We might be dealing with different circumstances, and situations, related to any incident. Therefore, investigation categories cover, four different types of investigations, undertaken by an organization. The first is, operational investigation, which mainly covers, technological issues, and, is fixed internally after finding our CA, or, root cause analysis. The second type of investigation is, criminal investigation, which covers criminal offenses, and, is conducted, with the help of law enforcement. The third type of investigation is, civil investigation, which covers, civil disputes between two parties, mostly due to contract breaches, or, intellectual property breaches. And, the fourth type of investigation is, regulatory investigation, which is conducted by regulatory authorities, to ensure standards are met by an organization. All investigations may involve, various pieces of evidence, like real evidence, documentary evidence, and, testimonial evidence. One of the very crucial aspect, of any investigation exercise is, conducting digital forensics. Digital forensics, involves the collection of digital data, from a system, to investigate, and, produces evidence before authorities. The digital data includes everything, from the archive files, to messages transmitted in the network, and, cache information and random access memory, or, RAM, and, swap memory. Hence, it is important to follow, a predefined rule of capturing, volatile data first. There are few key pointers to keep in mind. While working on digital forensics. First is, file carving. File carving, is a data extraction technique, used to extract information from a disk. It can help, in getting specific information, stored on the disk, as a file. Another important pointer, to keep in mind is, often it is not recommended, to start forensic operations, on a disk directly. Instead, a snapshot of the disk is taken, and, then used for information extraction. This helps to keep the evidence unaltered, during the whole forensics operation. It is important to understand, that data extraction must follow a certain priority. For example, data in the cache memory is most volatile, and, must be extracted first. Now, when we have a fair idea of incidents, and, how to perform investigations related to them. Various attack, and, exploitation frameworks, are quite helpful in understanding, and simulating, incidents. Attack frameworks, have a detailed description of various scenarios, by which an attacker can access a system, and, exploit vulnerabilities. One of the common frameworks is, MITRE, or, MITRE's framework. Among various attack frameworks, MITRE's attack framework, is the most popular. It is recognized, and used, by organizations worldwide. This model, follows a tabular approach, where you can choose various attack techniques, and, read more about them. To understand them better. Another framework is, the Diamond Model of Intrusion Framework. The Diamond Model of Intrusion Framework follows four core features. First is, the adversary, or attacker, one who is trying, to hack into your system. The second is, victim, one who is vulnerable, to exploitation. The third is, adversary's capability, which comprises, the various attack vectors, and hacking tools, available in the adversary's arsenal. And fourth is, adversary's infrastructure, like compute, and network resources, available to the attacker, to conduct the system-wide attack. Another key framework is, cyber kill chain. While, MITRE's framework lists down, the techniques of the attacks, and, the diamond model describes, the ways in which those techniques can be used. Cyber kill chain concentrates on, persistent threats any organization, or, application, faces. It follows the sequence of attempts, conducted by the attacker, till the attack is successful. While, all these topics, we covered in this domain of the exam may seem, not as interesting, as some of the other domain topics, yet they are important from the exam perspective, and, for information security in general. This brings us to end of the episode 11 of the Get Certified Together podcast from Technikoff, on the CompTIA Security Plus exam. 
In episode 12, I will proceed to the next and last domain of the exam, governance, risk, and compliance. Thanks for listening. Thank mm-hmm. you.